change lives, change lives, change organizations, change organizations, change organizations, change the world. Ten years ago, I set a goal to climb the tallest mountain in the Western Hemisphere and one of the tallest mountains in the world. Aconcagua, its name just sounds insidious, rises to a height of 23,000 feet and is located in a remote corner of the Andes mountain range in Argentina. A few months ago, I found myself on the GSB winter break with a spare month to kill and decided to go down to Argentina and attempt to climb this mountain. I got there and Katie, I was on that ridge line. <laughs> I was climbing this thing. I was on my way up. Every night I couldn't sleep because winds were battering my tent. Every day I could barely eat because the altitude was diminishing my appetite. And with each step, I could barely breathe on my way up this mountain. I got to within 700 meters of the summit. I could see the summit. I could taste it. I could practically feel it. But I could also feel that I was too mentally and physically exhausted to continue up the mountain. So I looked at the summit one last time, this goal that I had had for 10 years, and I looked the other way, and I walked down the mountain. I had failed at something I had set out to intend to achieve. And when I came home, I talked to my dad about my experience. My dad shares my passion for the outdoors, and he was very much my inspiration for originally spending time in the mountains. And my dad said, well, I'm really proud of you, Aaron, for making such a prudent decision and turning around. But surely, you'll go back next year and finish what you've started. Now, my dad is used to a fair amount of sass and attitude from me. <laughs> Many of you are too. But he was really surprised by my answer. I turned to him and I said, Dad, I am not going back to that mountain. I've been there. I've experienced it. I'm more concerned now about what's next. I believe that my response to my dad isn't just about my failure and ultimately success on Aconcagua. I think it's emblematic of our generation. I believe that we are a generation of what I call intrepid warriors, 20-something future leaders who are going to change the world according to a unique and nonlinear model that generations before us don't fully understand. My hope for you today is that you'll join me in this quest to be an intrepid warrior and that you too will realize that you can live an aspirational and entrepreneurial life that I believe my generation embodies. We live according to a model. The model is to dream, to start, to endure, to maybe fail, to reflect, and then to start over. For intrepid warriors, the starting line is truly more important than the finish line. My dad's response to me wasn't all that unusual. Like many of my peers here at the GSB, I do like to succeed. I am goal-driven. I am outcome-driven. But my dad is very much a quintessential baby boomer. He went to college where he studied criminal justice. Then he became a police officer. He had four children. He lives in the suburbs, he commutes to work, he's worked at one job his entire life. And he's actually set to retire this year. I am the quintessential sassy daughter of the baby boomer. I studied history in my undergraduate. I then went and worked on Wall Street. I then decided Silicon Valley sounded really cool, so I decided to come to business school. I've been at Stanford for the past two years. I think I'll probably work for a company that makes bicycles after I graduate. <laughs> I live with my mother as an adult. She loved it. 
I'm unmarried. I envision eight or nine transformations before I'm finished on this journey. And I also don't think I'll ever retire. These are two models that show the difference between myself and my dad. My dad, the boomer, is the model on the left. He pursues progress according to a linear model. Step by step, he proceeds, and he ultimately drives toward what he's achieving by the small, incremental steps that lead him to that finish line. It's been very successful for him, and I admire him. I, and many of you in the audience, are the model on the right. We are a scattershot approach. We try everything. We throw things up against a wall and seize what sticks. And we are fundamentally unafraid of what happens between when we sort of launch that point and throw it up against the wall. It's a scattershot. There are successes, there are failures, there are starting lines, there are finish lines. But what's happening that I don't think maybe some older generations fully appreciate is that the trend line on that scatter plot is trending upward. And time will tell which model is a more successful path to progress, but I believe we're on to something. And I think the scattershot approach is going to lead to the slope of our line as a generation being one of the greatest that the world has ever seen. So let's unpack the scattershot a little bit. And let's understand what's behind this model that causes us to fail, succeed, try again, and enable progress through this unconventional method. The first step for me has been in the dream. I told you about how long I've dreamed of Aconcagua and read books about it and studied it online and finally found myself there a few months ago. But I dreamed for a long time. And as I dreamed, I wrote things down. And now, years later, I have this really, really long list, a spreadsheet, of many different <laughs> dreams that I have. I may achieve some of them, I may not. Many of you aspire to start companies, to meet new people, to climb new mountains, to meet new families, to recycle. <laughs> Regardless of what that is, in the dream stage, by writing it down, it brings us to the next stage. This is the number one most important stage of this entire model. If you leave this room today with one thing, I want you to leave with the word start in your mind. This is what our generation inhabits. We inhabit this starting line, this unabashedness at stepping up and seeing what happens. And that's what I did on Aconcagua. I didn't know what was gonna happen. I hoped what might happen, but when I got to that starting line, I was just as blind as I had ever been going into something. But I found that by being there, I started putting one step in front of the other. And that leads to the endure phase. Starting things is hard. There is no question about it. And I think my dad finds comfort in being along a linear line because he knows what each step looks like on that journey. That would be incredibly boring to me. I find comfort in having a lot of little bits along the way, and I take comfort in having done them before. Endurance is enabled by peers. I was on Aconcagua with a classmate and friend, and it's also enabled by having started before. It gets easier as it goes. The next stage is in brackets because it's the failure stage. We hope the failure stage doesn't happen, but sometimes it does. And as a generation, we're not afraid of this happening. I have a sneaky suspicion that my dad is actually a little bit afraid of failure. I don't want to fail, but I've experienced it, and I've also experienced some great successes that have come out of it. When I came back from Aconcagua, I feel incredibly prepared to do a future expedition. I made a great friend. I experienced a new culture. So I was able to find tremendous successes in something that objectively I still consider a failure. The last stage of the model is something my dad does really well and something as a generation we really don't. And that's the reflection phase. There's a reason why the model has white space between each of the areas. And that's because sometimes we just don't stop. 
we're on computers or we're on phones and we fail to fully appreciate the experience that we just had. So part of what I did after Aconcagua was walk down the mountain, uh, mostly because I had to. <laughs> <laughs> but it took three days and it gave me a tremendous opportunity to think about what happened and to more importantly think about what I would be taking away from this experience to future endeavors. And the final stage is just to start over. When my dad looks at this model, he sees something like a washing machine that just goes around and around and around and around and never stops. When I look at the model, I see something that goes around and around and around, but is actually a wheel that's moving us forward toward future progress. So when I think about Aconcagua, I don't think about going back. Why would I go back to Aconcagua when, as Katie pointed out, Mount Everest exists? <laughs> I'm not sure I will summit Mount Everest, but I'm very sure that I can start. And my challenge to all of you today is to find that part of your lives where you can be an intrepid warrior, where instead of going back and doing something that you've done before, find the courage that I know that you have to start something new.